Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 71. <laughs> no, it's episode 71 of the So Free Art podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art in things. And this one's going to be about the things. So I wasn't, I almost didn't do a podcast this week because as you might be able to hear, I'm not feeling very well. It's Saturday, the day before the podcast goes up, and I thought, why don't I just do a podcast about illness? Because <laughs> I thought it would be quite fun, actually. So, I've got a little paper towel. If You can get the video of this podcast at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson, and show notes and everything at sophielawson.com. But what I do is, um, when I'm at work, I've started doing this. If I get ideas in my head what to talk about, so I'll just write it down on a piece of kitchen towel i also write like ideas for drawings and stuff you just grab what you can so some of the little topics for this one this episode is going to be monks get ill i like sneezing lack of control can't control but you can control your mind lewis hamilton and then how the universe is always in control and it's all about like being fragile again So that's basically what this podcast is going to be about. (laughs) And that means we're into the episode now. And, well, I think what I'd start with is... Dennis is falling over. I think... Well, I want to start actually with sneezing. So I've been sneezing quite a lot. And I really like it. And the the weird thing about it is... You have no control over that. It, It comes... You can sort of try to suppress it, but bang, it comes out. And I just, I love it. It's, it feels nice. I almost like, it's, there's a little bit of, just before you sneeze, that feeling where you know it's coming. It's almost like, I find that quite exciting. And then, because every so often that feeling will come and you go, I'm about to sneeze. And then it just goes away. And I'm always, I always feel a little bit disappointed when that happens. (laughs) But I just love sneezing. And what it what it made me think was, it's something I didn't talk about on a, the one of the other episodes. When I was talking about this spider that was on my sketchbook, this is funny actually. Last week I was sketching down by the water with my little sketchbook. I was sketching again. I talked about a couple of episodes ago. A little spider was on my sketchbook, and without even thinking, I just threw it away. Like I went, I was got, I got scared, and I was trying not to be scared of spiders. So this time. I was sketching, I was looking at this boat, I looked down, there was a spider crawling right across my t-shirt like that, and I f- my first thought was, ah, oh. and then I thought, hang on, I'm supposed to be accepting spiders. I got my little sketchbook, put it like that, and like got the spider onto the sketchbook. I looked at it for about three seconds, and then I just threw it. Well, I didn't throw it, I, I shook it on the floor. <laughs> and I was a bit disappointed because I didn't... I didn't. I wasn't able to sit with the spider, so I'm still scared of it. But then I was sort of quite happy because I thought, well, at least this time I was able to. <coughs> sorry. At least this time I was able to sort of sit with the spider for a few seconds. And next time, maybe I'll be able to properly sit with it, and then at some point, I might even be able to stroke it. <laughs> Imagine if you could stroke a little spider. But what it, what it got me thinking was, <coughs> sorry, with this sneezing, because if you're, if I'm, if you're like me, like, I, I get, sometimes I get self-conscious around people, so I don't act myself 100%, but when you sneeze, you've got, you can't, you can't control that, so you just sneeze. So, like, if you're quite a quiet person, to sneeze is like pulling attention to you, but, so it... There's something in that, because with the spider as well, I was thinking, if I'd been surrounded by a load of people, that moment when that little spider was on my sketchbook, I still would have gone, ah! Like, even if there was loads of people, I wouldn't have cared about the people. So there's something in that, because it, it kind of makes me feel like like you have inside of you the ability to not care what people think, because you can do it in those moments where you're acting without thinking. So... I feel like it's thinking, it's thinking that's stopping you from just being yourself. (laughs) There's something in that, but I love sneezing, I love the feeling of it. 
and that's sort of like the lack of control it's with this illness <clears throat> you can't control whether you get ill it, it goes into these because i was thinking this morning like you start wondering because i've been ill i've been ill all week and i've been thinking is there anything i could have done to have stopped this and it's not really that bad of an illness i've just got a, a bunged up throat and feeling a bit tired and stuff but i was thinking there's nothing i could have done about it <coughs> and then i thought well like like monks monks are an example that there's nothing you can do because because i was thinking i could have like well yeah i was thinking like you could eat you can exercise you can eat healthily you can get lots of sleep you can do all these things which will probably minimize the chance of getting ill because i think i would say i think like 60 percent of illnesses are to do with like something like that like you're not you're not sleeping enough or you're not eating the right things <laughs> uh, i could say some really disgusting things but <laughs> i don't know whether i should yeah well because i've got tissues I, I'm, I'm gonna like blow my nose <laughs> this is this is a little bit disgusting but it's kind of beautiful in a weird way the the different shades of green <laughs> I know that's disgusting. The different shades of greens that have com- been coming out of my nose. It's quite amazing. Like some of them, it's almost been like a fluorescent green. Then you've got like pastel greens. So it's quite fascinating seeing. And I start thinking, what are bogies anyway? I don't even know what bogies are. <laughs> so then I start wondering, well, why do they get different coloured greens when you're ill? And stuff like that. <laughs> that's a bit weird. But so... You can do like the exercising and all, all of that, but even if you do do that, you're still going to get ill. And I, th- I thought to myself, is that true, or is it possible to never get ill? And then I thought about some monks. So there's a monk. Well, all the monks I've I've been watching on YouTube, they always from time to time mention other monks that get ill or when they got ill. So like these, mo- if a monk can get ill, I think anyone can get ill. So there's nothing you can do about it. But what I thought was. There's nothing you can do about getting ill, but you can, you're still in control of your mind. Because like this morning when I was at work, there was a few moments where I thought to myself, I just, I thought, oh, I just want to go home and go to sleep. And like, I just, I, yeah, I, I kind of couldn't be bothered to, to work. <laughs> but then I thought, hang on a minute, you know, it, yeah, it was just like, because I could feel that that, that could have gone to quite a negative place. Because if I kept thinking, I want to go home, I don't want to be here, that would go quite negative. So I kept saying, look, you're ill. It's almost like, God, how many times does it come back to this? But it, it comes back to awareness again. Awareness that you're ill. There's a beautiful quote by a monk, Ajahn Bra. He says, this too shall pass. So... That's the thing, it's going to pass. Because sometimes when you're ill, it, it feels like it's, it's, it's never going to end. But it will. So, yeah, I don't, know, I don't really know where I'm going with that. But I think it's just a case of if, if monks can get ill, anyone can get ill. <laughs> and it, there's something that's happened... Well, I love Formula One. Formula One is like one of my biggest passions... And there's my favourite driver is Lewis Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton, and he is a master. Dri- he's a master driver, especially in the wet. Like in the wet, they call him the rain master. He's amazing in the wet. Three weeks ago, there was a wet German Grand Prix, and everyone. F- well, I thought you know he's gonna he's gonna destroy this. Thing was, he's he'd been ill. He had been ill all weekend. And the thing is, he was really ill, and yet he still he still did his best. He still got pole position, which, looking back now, is quite amazing. He got pole position, which means he's the fastest driver in qualifying. So he started at the front. So even though he was ill, he still got pole. And then in the race, well, in the race he was doing really well in the wet. And then, it, I don't know, it was about lap 30 or something, he went up a track... He crashed into the wall, then he spun later on, and he just basically he dropped down the order. 
and it wasn't Lewis Hamilton, but yet he still did his best, and he still like gave it everything he had, and he still got into points, which is quite amazing. But it just shows you that, like, it just shows you how like illness can, it can just totally destroy you, really, for that po- for that moment. Again, I don't really know what the point of that little story is, but I kind of got. I kind of got, um, it inspired me really, it inspired me that he, even though he was really ill, he still did his best, he still did his best, he still did really good, and he still got a couple of points, so, like other drivers crashed out of the race and didn't finish, but he, at least he still finished, which is quite amazing, like Formula One really inspires me, when I was growing up as a child, I, I fell in love with Formula One. <coughs> I fell in love with Formula One in 1994. My first ever race was actually Ayrton Senna's last race when he died. He crashed and died. That night, I started crying. No, I, I still to this day don't know why because I didn't know, I didn't know Ay- Ayrton Senna. There's a weird sort of connection there, and from that moment, like I fell in love with Formula One, and. The drivers, they inspire me because they're pushing to the limits. So many things from Formula One help me in my art. And I've even thought about this. It's a bit weird, but a Formula One driver goes around a racetrack, lap after lap after lap, perfecting the corner. This is just like drawing. Because what you do with drawing is you're... Say you're trying to draw a nice curvy line. Well, what you do is you just... You draw that line over and over and over again... At f- you're trying to do a, l- you know in your head what line you're, so- you're trying to do. At first, it's going to go a bit wobbly. Then it's going to go a bit long, a bit, th- but at some point, you'll get the movement in your hand to the point where you can do it without even thinking. So, like with my little Sophie character, I've got a little character called little Sophie. I can pretty much draw her basic shapes without even thinking about it. I could like shut my eyes and draw her. It's because I've perfected the shapes in that one in that one pose. Just like a Formula One driver, a Formula One driver, especially when on a, when they're on a new racetrack, they don't know the corner, so they go through it a bit slow. They keep going through it until they they end up going off, spinning off. They've pushed to the limit. Like when you're drawing, you make it wibbly and wobbly. At some point, you get you get the rhythm in your hand and you so like I say you can almost switch off and just do it that's what that's what a Formula 1 driver's like because it's exactly the same with racing games I'm going to do a podcast about that how racing games are just like drawing <laughs> it's a bit weird that I didn't expect to go down there but really the, the only thing I w- wanted to say is like illness it shows you how sort of fragile we are it goes back to that thing I said the other the other week on the podcast. Looking at little animals, you realise how fragile they are because you could just squish them. They're really fragile. But you know, if you zoom out into space, we are that same thing because we're tiny in the grand scheme of things. So we are just as fragile. And then when you get ill, you just realise how fragile you are because... An ill can an illness can sort of what's it called? It can just stop you from being able to do what you want to do. Yeah, and then like even well, an illness it can develop into death, and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's kind of like the universe is always in control. You can have all these plans. Say this week, Thursday, I'm going to record the podcast. I'm going to do this, this, and this. You get ill, you can't do that. Well, you could do that, I suppose. But, yeah, I suppose you could do that. Like Lewis Hamilton, he got ill and he he still did it. But then, when because he kept crashing and stuff, it shows that he wasn't at his best. So, I don't know. I don't know whether you should still show up when you're feeling ill or whether you should just go to bed and rest. (laughs) Ah, it reminds me of a little quote that of my mum. She used to have, on her wall... She used to have this little poster and it said, blah, 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 rest if you must, but don't you quit. I love that. 
that was quite powerful on its, on its own. But this is quite like one of those little synchronicity things. I moved into a house in 2014. Little house. The house was completely empty. Now, how much of a coincidence is this? And it's it's one of those one of those things where I just know it's it's not just a coincidence. It's something in there. I moved I moved into this house completely empty, nothing in there, apart from one little, it was like a little poem, poster thing, on the worktop surface in the kitchen, and it was the exact poem that from my mum, that exact same poem, and it said at the end, rest if you must, but don't you quit. <laughs> I mean, how, how amazing is that? Bing! That's basically this week's podcast. <coughs> Dennis! All about illness. And what we doing? What we gonna do on the next podcast? Well, I want to do a podcast. I want the next one to be all about video game. Well, addiction, really. I want to talk about addiction because I want to talk about. I think it's been about six months now since I stopped playing video games. So I'm gonna talk about the progress of that, and also little tips I've got of how to overcome addiction. I got a really good little tip. And so I'll talk about that on the next one. I was going to do that this week, but I thought I just didn't feel like it this week. So that's going to be the next one. Then I've got, I think, about the tings, that episode about lucid dreaming and stuff. I had a lucid dream in the week. That's amazing. I've started calling my... I've actually started naming my lucid dreams, uh, like <laughs> like little t- titles. So this, the one in the week, this will be like a little cliffhanger. I've named that one the Trolley of Death, <laughs> Shopping Trolley of Death. So I'll talk about that on about the Tings episode. It was a really weird lucid dream, that one. Yeah, very weird. And I also want to talk about that meditation, that really deep meditation. I don't know whether that's going to be its own episode or I might stick that in with the About the Tings. But basically, August is all going to be, I'm going to just clear up the podcast because little Dennis is he's got a little bag with all the topics in it that I was randomly pulling out I thought what I might do is have an episode where I just pull all the topics out really quickly and go through them all and then if there's any topics you'd like me to talk about you can leave a little message or something and just and I'll talk about it but in starting in September I'm going to start focusing the podcasts on like studying and books and articles and stuff with about the things at the end of the month but I'm still going to throw in random episodes like this from time to time because somebody on YouTube actually le- left a, a message on last week's podcast saying that I'm overthinking it <laughs> and I do agree so and again it oh, it's weird I've got this thing I've got like this it's like a mentality or something it's like an it's an all or nothing, so I feel like I've got to go all, all, all of this or nothing. But you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. You've got to get in the balance. You've got to get in the middle somewhere where, so I can do studying, lucid dreaming, and random episodes like this. That's what I'm going to do. So basically, that's a little bit about the next couple of weeks. I've randomly picked. A book off my bookshelf, and it's called *The Power of Night*. <laughs> the Power of Now: A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment by Eckhart Tolle. I met a friend at art class a couple of months ago, and he recommended this book, so I went and bought it. I haven't read it yet, but I just before this podcast, I randomly flicked through the book, and I thought, let's see what sort of quotes are in here. And I found a little quote. So this week's inspirational quote is going to come out of the book The Power of Now by Eckhard Tolle. It's a bit of a big quote, but let's see what we've got here. So it says, it says, I cannot believe that I could never, (laughs) I've already messed it. I cannot believe that I could ever reach a point where I am completely free of my problems. So that's somebody else saying that. He now responds, or he or she, they respond by saying, You are right. You can never reach that point because you are at that point now. There is no salvation in time. 
You cannot be free in the future. Present is the key to freedom. So you can only be free now. Amazing. So if the rest of the book is as good as that, I'm going to really enjoy that. He was he was saying this book is it's like a life-changing book to him. So I'm going to really... Again, this is another book I would talk about on the podcast when I start reading it. Nearly finished my lucid dreaming book. I've got like five pages to go. So I can't wait for that because then I start moving on to some of these other books. But little this, le- this week's little quote is... There is no salvation in time. You cannot be free in the future. Presence is the key to freedom. So you can only be free now. (laughs) Can you can you hear that little? Uh-huh.